Hello class, this is Peter Deswood. This is corporate finance or corporate accounting. We're taking a look at chapter one and over, overview of managerial finance. So this does parallel the book. So learning outcomes for this chapter explain what finance entails and why everyone should have an understanding of basic concepts. Identify different forms of business organizations as well as the advantages and disadvantages of each. So both of these are similar to some of the previous accounting classes you've taken. Number three, identify major goals that firms pursue and what a firm's primary goal should be. Explain the role ethics and good governance play in successful businesses. Describe how foreign firms differ from U.S. firms and identify factors that affect financial decisions in multinational firms. So what is finance? Well, finance is concerned with decisions about money, cash flow. You know, these are decisions, again, financial statements and previous accounting classes were, were put together to make decisions by internal and external uh, stakeholders. Finance decisions deal with how money is raised and used. Everything else is being, everything else being equal, more value is preferred to less. The sooner cash is received, the more valuable it is. Less risky assets are more valuable than preferred to riskier assets. General areas of finance, financial markets and institutions, there's investments, financial services, and managerial finance. So finance and non-finance areas, all areas of business, marketing, management, accounting, production, information systems, and so forth are affected by general finance concepts. So finance and the organizational finance and the organizational structure of the firm. Um, so up on the very top is the board of directors, then the CEO, vice president of sales, the COO, CFO, CIO, and then so on and so forth. This looks like this is the accounting department, who's over the person that oversees it is the controller, sometimes called the comptroller. Also the treasurer, take a, take a look at a lot of the credit managers, inventory managers, and director of capital budgeting. So overall, this is the structure. This is pretty typical for a lot of businesses in the United States. So I do sit on the board at uh, the farm south of Farmington, Navajo Agricultural Product Industry. And this is what the organizational structure looks like as well. Primary forms of business organizations. So there's proprietorship, partnership, and corporations. Proprietorships, advantages, ease of formation, subject to few government regulations, no double taxation. There are limitations, unlimited personal liability, limited life, transferring ownership is difficult, difficult to raise large amounts of capital. The partnership, like a proprietorship, except two or more owners. A partnership has roughly the same advantages and limitations as proprietorship. A partnership generally can raise more capital than a proprietorship because there are more owners. Okay. There's also the corporation, which is a legal entity. The advantages of this form of business or type of business, unlimited life, easy transfer of ownership, limited liability, ease of raising capital, can issue stocks and bonds. Some of the disadvantages, cost of creating and reporting fi report filing. It's double taxed as well. There are hybrid forms of business, limited liability partnership, LLP. There's also a limited liability company and LLC. There's also S Corp, no more than 100 stockholders. So these are some hybrids of the corporation. Business organized as a corporation, uh, your value is maximized. Limited liability reduces risk, which increases market value. Ease of raising capital allows corporations to take advantage of growth opportunities. Ownership can be easily transferred via stock transactions, and thus investors are willing to pay more for a corporation. Goals of the corporation, primary goal, stockholder wealth maximization, which is the same as maximizing the stock price. Managerial incentives, and then there's also some social responsibility also known as corporate social response, corporate social responsibility. Managerial actions to maximize stockholder wealth. 
capital structure decisions, capital budgeting decisions, and dividend policy decisions. So value of the firm. So you can take a look at this. This is also in the book. So these are things to look at. Market factor considerations. There's two ways to view that. Firm factors and then investor factors. Uh, so net cash flow to the left and rate of return to the right. Value of firm, value. So take a look at those and you can look at this more in more detail than your textbook or your online book. Factors influenced by managers that affect stock price. Projected cash flows, timing of cash flow streams, risk of projected cash flows or earnings, use of debt or capital structure, and dividend policy. Agency relationships and agency relationship exists when, whenever a principal, which is an owner, hires an agent management to act on his or her behalf. An agency problem results when the agent or management makes decisions that are not in the best interest of the principals or the owners. Stockholders versus managers. Managers are naturally inclined to act in their own best interests. Mechanisms to motivate managers to act in shareholders' best interests. Managerial compensation, such as incentives, shareholder intervention, and threat of takeover. Business ethics. So dictionary says a standard of conduct and moral behavior. This is a pretty big topic uh, whenever you take previous accounting classes. So make sure this is something that you really study. Ethics is important because of the risk of money being stolen or fraud, things of that nature, breaking the law. So business ethics, a company's attitude and conduct towards its employees, customers, community, and stockholders. For example, the firm's stakeholders. Corporate governance is the set of rules that a firm follows when conducting business as a result of the Sarbanes-Oaks Leak Act of 2002. Firms have substantially revised their corporate governance policies. Good corporate governance generally generates higher returns to stockholders. But keep in mind, we've already looked at some of these comp these uh, you know, for example, this uh, the Sarban Oakley Act. We've already looked at that in uh, previous accounting classes, so this shouldn't be anything particular new. Uh, chapter one is typically kind of a review, so that you have a you know we connect to your background knowledge. Forms of business in other countries. Foreign firms have higher concentrations of ownership, i.e., fewer owners than U.S. firms. Foreign firms have much different relationships with finance financial institutions differ than do U.S. firms. Multinational corporations, uh, here's five reasons firms go international to seek new markets, to seek raw materials, to seek new technology, to seek production efficiency, to avoid political and regulatory hurdles. This one is easily, this is taxes, like right, there's a lot of tax shelters. Uh, to seek production efficiently, uh, this is where a lot of companies build stuff in China or India because it's cheaper. You buy, you buy stuff cheaper. You have more um, income and more revenue. Uh, you have you, the amount of money that you're making for your stockholders is higher. So also, I mean, those other three up top are, are important as well. But honestly, the bottom two are probably the most important reasons why companies go multinational. So keep that in mind. Factors distinguishing domestic firms from multinational firms, different currency denominations, economic and legal ramifications, language differences, cultural differences, roles of governments, and political risk. So these are all things to take into account whenever you are looking at the differences between domestic and multinational firms. So that'll be, that'll be it for this chapter. Um, so, you know, look out for any videos. I'll attach these videos to any of the uh, homework modules that I put out for each chapter. So thank you for watching this video. If you want to watch other videos, I did teach Accounting 100 and Accounting, I think it was 201. So I have videos for those other uh, classes as well. So, all right, have a good day.